I don't want anyone interrupting this fight. Come on. Go! Hello once again, my chickadees. Game and Chick back once more with another magical adventure. Before we get started, I would like to give a big shout out and special thank you to Square Enix for providing me with the review key to make this review possible. Thank you so much. So with that out of the way, let's go. Balan Wonderworld is an action platformer developed and published by Square Enix. With classic games like Sonic the Hedgehog, Samba de Amigo, and Nights into Dreams under his belt, Yuji Naka now aims to bring us another platformer in the hopes that it, too, will become another timeless classic for ages to come. But does Balan Wonderworld meet those expectations? Or does it instead come up a little bit short on its overall magic? Only one way to find out. So... It's showtime! Story as the stars of the show in this wacky and magical land of Wonderworld, it is up to you to travel across multiple different lands in the hopes of keeping intact the dreams and memories of the citizens you encounter, and keep safe everything they hold dear. Listen and participate in 12 different tales and bring magic and hope once again to the bizarre and wondrous world. Gameplay As stated before, Fallen Wonderworld is an action platformer from the mind of Yuji Naka. Currently, it's a great time to be alive if you're a fan of the platforming genre, as they've shown an increase in momentum in the last few years with titles like Super Mario Odyssey, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, Crash 4, and many others. But how well does Balan Wonderworld stand out from the pack? Does it even stand out from the pack? Well, the answer to the latter part of the question is yes. Yes, it does indeed stand out but it stands out in a way that may be hit or miss for a lot of people, due to its focus on bringing back the old-school style of 3D platforming. Do you remember the days of Super Mario 64 and Banjo? Well, welcome back to yesteryear, because you're about to embark on a new journey that seems somewhat familiar. Balan Wonderworld takes us back to the days when platformers didn't hold your hand. So often modern platformers, mainly collectathons, will give you indications of where to go, where to find a collectible, and where to find a secret room or item. But not here in this game. Nope. This game tells you, tough luck, kid. You're on your own. I'm gonna cry. Upon getting thrusted into your first level, you're immediately confused about where you should go. No, it's not a maze or anything, but each level you proceed through has branching paths or secret areas to discover. And each one of these paths or secret areas houses some of your collectibles that you will need in order to advance in the game. These collectibles are known as balanced statues. Much like in the Mario franchise, in which you have to collect stars or moons in order to move on to a new area, balance statues do the same thing here. Get a specific amount of statues and new levels open up via a train ride, given to you by Balan himself. That's right, you don't even need to find Platform 9 and 3 Force to board, so big win there. Overall, pretty straightforward, right? Well, not quite. Remember when I told you that this game takes you back to the days of old platformers? I wasn't making that up. I'll elaborate a little bit more here. You see, it's not as easy as just seeing something in the distance and grabbing it. The game makes you work for every collectible you wish to collect by making you comb through each and every inch of each stage by utilizing all the different costumes and powers they hold. In total, there are around 80 costumes to collect in your roughly 8-10 to 10 hour playthrough of the game, and each costume has a specific power that will help you to overcome gigantic leaps, water streams, spider webs, and many more. For example, on the first stage you play on, you'll notice to the left of the starting area that there's a spider web that will take you up and over a wall. However, you cannot get to that wall just yet. 
In order to get to that specific section of the level, you're going to have to advance further in the game until you unlock the spider costume, which will give you the ability to climb any webs that you come across and open up the environment so much more than it was previously. This is where the core gameplay shows its strength in my own opinion, because these costumes are not just put in the game to add a simple aesthetic to the game, and then that's it. No way, that couldn't be further from the truth. No, each individual costume is utilized in their own unique way, and all have their own use based off of a specific scenario you find yourself in. 80 costumes might seem like overkill on paper, but trust me, it all makes sense when you play. Now I'm sure you're wondering, so how the heck do they balance all of these costumes and their powers without completely breaking the game in the process? Well, that's actually a really good question, and it has a very good answer. The game utilizes basically one button. Yes, you heard me right, only one button makes everything in the game function. While that may seem a little confusing at first, it's really not. It's all actually a stroke of genius to do it this way. By making the game more accessible and easier to play, it allowed the developers to utilize every costume to their full potential without having to worry about which to balance more than the other. Let me give you an example. As your main powerless character, all you're able to do is jump with one push of a button. However, with a wardrobe like Piggy costume, that jump with one button now turns into a ground pound to lower switches and other hazards. This holds true for every single power-up in costume. Some costumes can only do damage, throw items, teleport, or hover. And making you pick and choose which costume you need to select and equip makes this platformer actually turn into a bit of a strategy game. Which actually reminds me a lot of another game I absolutely love on the Xbox 360, Cameo Elements of Power. In Cameo Elements of Power, you are able to equip and use various elemental powers such as Pummelweed, a boxing plant-like element, Rubble, a rock-based element, and many more, and utilize them at will to advance through a level, traverse terrain, or slay an enemy. And this holds true here in Balan Wonderworld. When you start collecting an abundance of various costumes, you're able to equip just three of them at one time, all of which can be switched to on the fly and seamlessly changed by pressing L1 or R1. If you happen to die and lose out on a power-up, and this is where the game's checkpoints will come into play for you. Every time you get into a new section of a level, you will find a glowing symbol in the middle of the floor. If you happen to stand on it long enough, it will bring up a wardrobe that will allow you to select any costume you currently have unlocked. Sort of. You see, as you push through the levels, you will hit purple-looking crystals which give you your costumes. Each time you get a crystal with a picture of your costume on it, it goes to your wardrobe inventory. So, it's simple. If you haven't collected enough of them, or you had one in stock, but died and lost it, then you have to backtrack to the level you found it in and get more in your inventory. Might sound a little tedious, sure, but it's not too bad. By having to backtrack and find power-ups you need to spread out through all 12 chapters, it actually makes the game feel more and more puzzle-centric as you progress through the story. A few more examples of this include certain levels that require you to use a dolphin suit. With the dolphin suit, you're allowed to go in all water areas and glide through them with ease in order to make it to higher platforms or other areas you need to get to. However, if you try to progress with any other character but that dolphin character, it will act like a brick wall and it will not be usable. This also holds true for boss fights. Specific boss fights utilize this costume switching mechanic as well. One of the early bosses in the game can't be jumped on like normal, and instead summons small and giant pillars across the arena you're fighting in. He chooses to stand on the tallest one, all while the smaller ones are left for you to use as cover or as part of the fight itself. This is where the piggy power-up becomes a key focal point and major part of your strategy. With the piggy costume, you're allowed to jump and ground pound with force in order to shoot the pillar up the boss's booty and give him major damage and maybe even a little bit of a hemorrhoid, but nothing Preparation H wouldn't fix. Using this strategy with Piggy, you'll realize that this is not possible with any other character, and should you choose not to hit him with the pillar, not only does it completely change the dynamic of the stage you're on, but also the way the fight plays out and what moveset the enemy will use next. It may seem small, but I absolutely love that. I'm sure you've seen it already, but this game is cute, way too cute. Sure, the game might not be the best looking platformer out there, but its general design, color scheme, and environments have that playful charm to it that strongly reminds me of titles like Klonoa and Night into Dreams. But its cuteness and stylistic aesthetics aren't the only things that remind me of titles like Night into Dreams. Oh no, it's the music too. The music in Balan Wonderworld is simply fantastic.
swear this one piece of music sounds like the said from Final Fantasy X. You could literally put in Stage 1 song into FF10 and it will work. Check it out! Hey, it's this way! See? I told you! It actually does make sense why the sound is similar though, since Ryo Yamazaki was the synthesizer programmer for that title, and does the soundtrack here. But then, uh oh, what is this? You're hit with the blast of upbeat vocal soundtracks and killer dance routines out of the blue after defeating a boss, and it sounds like it would straight up fit in movies like Grease or Little Shop of Horrors. It reminded me so much of the vocal tracks from Night Into Dreams, and while people may find it campy and cheesy, I don't really care. I ate it all up and adored it immensely. This is the type of soundtrack I need a collector's edition for. So far I've been feeding the game a lot of praises, but it's not a perfect game or even a flawless one. Obviously, there are some issues I personally have with the title. While it may not be an overly huge game-breaking type of flaw, it's still one I was disappointed with and it relates to the overall game difficulty. This game is way too easy. I'm talking about absurd levels of easy. With Fallen Wonderworld, we've entered Kirby's epic yarn level of difficulty level. No real enemy in the game will ever give you a challenge or make you feel the heat of the battle. And this also goes for the boss fights too. Each boss fight, while they look really good and have great variety, will not leave you struggling to deal with them because they only take two or three hits and they don't always react as fast as they should, which allows you plenty of time to think before you act, guaranteeing that you're always a step ahead of them and any attacks they throw at you. You're never really in any danger of losing or getting a game over either, because even if you lose all your power-ups and die in your normal human form, you automatically get respawned at the nearest checkpoint. There's no real consequence for death, which is a huge bummer for me because with a game that brings back so much of the old platforming style I love, with this, the game's difficulty, they came up short big time. Extra stuff. When you decide to take a break in between the levels you've completed and just want to chill and hang out, you may do so in the main game's hub area. In this hub area, you can play with the animals called Tims. These are little squishy marshmallow friends that sound like Kirby. Bye, you may play with them in several ways. One of the ways you play with them is by feeding them yellow, blue, and red gems that you collect in each level. The more you feed them, the more of them that respawn and fills your tower meter. Every time you get a set amount of your squishy friends, a new section of the hub tower will be built. It actually feels very rewarding. When one Tim gets too fat though, hit him with the slim fast. Well, no, I'm joking, kind of. When one Tim gets too fat, you must use another marshmallow friend and toss him at the fat one, which will make him explode and turn into an egg, thus creating even more marshmallow peeps. Mmm, marshmallow peeps. They really do look like that too. I'll try to contain myself not to eat one. Oh my god, but it just looks so yummy. Come here! Uh. With the inclusion of these Tim creatures, it seems Naka's past experience with titles he's led in the past has had some sort of influence on the game. The Tims remind me of Chao from the Sonic Adventure series, and I can't get over how adorable these little things are. I wish I could take them anywhere with me from now on, like the Pokeball accessory for the Nintendo Switch. But I also don't have a VMU to hold them in either, so that's out of the question. But playing with your cute friends isn't the only thing left to do, even after you've completed the main campaign. You still have a ton of collectibles and extra bonus minigames that you probably won't find on your normal first playthrough. When you're not collecting Balan statues, you're able to find top hats and other collectibles that allow you to play momentarily as Balan himself as you fly through the air, night style, and have to press a button at the exact right time Balan's shadow lines up with his body. Get a perfect excellent rating, and you'll earn a secret Balan statue. Fail once, however, and you get nothing. As you move through each level and environment, you will also come across various minigames to play as well that will offer you prizes. These minigames range from soccer, baseball, bowling, and even golf. 
If you come across a soccer minigame, you will be required to kick a ball into a specific target while filling your power meter to just the right amount of power, whereas minigames like baseball require your concentration and perfect timing to get as many home runs as you can. Once again, if you fail these, your reward will be very minimal. So do your best! Overall At the end of the day, Balan Wonderworld does a lot of things I feel range from good to even great. It's got great music, great art design, likable characters, great variety in its platforming section, along with utilizing all your costumes in a puzzle-like fashion that makes you use strategy before acting. This game has many positives to me. But with all the great things there are to say, there are a few things that maybe needed a little work. The game's difficulty leaves much to be desired, and it's one of the main negative things I walked away thinking after playing this title. Another issue I can see people having a problem with is this game's use of backtracking. You will be backtracking a lot in this game, because certain sections of a level won't be accessible until you acquire a specific power-up, so you must come back later should you want to collect everything in the game. Not a big deal for someone like me, who loves collecting everything, but I can definitely see it as a turnoff or a main gripe for a lot of players. Overall, my experience with Balan Wonderworld was a positive one, and one I am glad I was able to experience. By harnessing the spirit of Naka's previous titles, while it doesn't overcome and surpass the classics I named earlier, it still managed to end up being a solid old-school platformer, and one I would absolutely recommend to anyone who is looking for an old-school style of 3D platformer from the good old days. I personally feel that if you're one of those people, you will not be disappointed. So with that verdict, Game & Chick says bye now! Hey everyone! Thanks for watching! I really hope you enjoyed that review, and I look forward to bringing more to you in the coming future. For new people, feel free to hit that subscribe button and give this video a like or share. And for people already subscribed, make sure to hit that notification bell so that you do not miss out on any future content on Also, feel free to click on my other reviews linked above because they're kind of cool too. So give them a look! Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch all you chickadees on the next one.